Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about baking alpha textures um, using a mixture of Blender and Substance Painter. Recently I made a video on how to make quick wire meshes in Blender. Uh, you can check it out in the link in the description. Now I wanted to show you how to optimize those meshes by baking them onto a low poly version of a single sided mesh so you can play with them in game. You do get good results. There is the odd occasion where it doesn't look so great. Um, Say, for example, you've got a thick fence, thick wooden fence, and then you stick a, a thin plane on it. It's not going to look so good, but in a lot of situations, you can get away with it, and it'll save you so much poly count. I'm going to show you an example with um, a little bit of a fence and also two of the balls that we made in the previous video. First of all, you're going to have your high poly meshes that you uh, may have made following my previous video. I've just made a simple fence design here with the crisscross pattern and two of the the ball spheres weird weird patterns just to show you how to bake those as well we are going to need low poly versions of these because currently these are sitting at 4.1 million triangles which is excessive um, and obviously no use to a game whatsoever uh, especially since you know in the case you're probably going to want tons of these fences in your world and I don't know about these two if you'd want them in your games, but if you took this one for example, this is like 3.9 million triangles um, just on the shape alone because I've got subdivisions and stuff. Um, yeah, it's no good. We want it to get it down to like a very simple sphere. So how do we do this? First I'm going to show you with the balls quickly because the fence is quite straightforward. It's just a simple plane, um, but we'll get to it in a second. Right, so for example, I'm just going to move this back to the center with Alt-G. I'm going to hide this one a second. So we've got this, as I said, 3.9 million try mesh thing. What we want to do is add a low poly sphere that we can bake this texture onto and use as our game asset. So first of all, you're going to add in a UV sphere. I'm going to change it to like a 16 by 8 sphere, very low poly. And I'm going to stretch it up so it just overlaps like this what we want is we want to get this information of this pattern onto this low poly sphere what it's going to do is look at the normals in this low poly sphere um for example i'll show you quickly this is the normals so it's going to take information it's going to look out and take the information that it can from this from this pattern and bake it directly onto the slow poly mesh. For this to work, to bake the alpha texture and for it to be successful, this needs to be a single sided sphere. Well, it is currently, as, as I said, if I um, delete this, it'll see straight through. It's just a single sided mesh. Um, there can't be any thickness to this, because if there's thickness, then it's not going to work, because it'll, it'll uh, bake a hole, but then there'll be nothing on the sides. So it'll just be a weird gap, and it just won't work. So, what you want to do is. Um, Unwrap this sphere. We're gonna just cut it in half, mark a seam, go into UV editing, and then I press U on your keyboard and unwrap. So this is gonna have two halves of the sphere. Where are we? So if we're just looking at the low poly, right? Um, you've got. Just turn this back on from. So if we're just looking at the sphere, we've cut in half. You've got the top part, the bottom part, and the top part in our UV space. What we want to do as well is to remember to shade smooth so this looks like a sphere. So this is so 224 try ball, um, which is a lot better than 3.9 million. So we need to bake this high poly onto this low poly. So I've done the same quickly for both balls here, and these are both got to have low poly meshes. Um, what I've also done, if you can see on the right hand side, is name your meshes. So I have Alpha Sphere 2 high poly and Alpha Sphere 2 underscore low poly. So the naming convention works, hence score HP, hence score low P, and then same for the other one, the high poly and the low poly. So what I've just done, um, as I showed before, is I've got two low poly spheres, cut them in half, and I've just unwrapped them, and this simple unwrap, and uh, this is what it looks like on the left hand side. This is going to be our texture. So you're ready to export. You want to select your two low polys, well, export, FBX, uh, put it somewhere, so alpha sphere, alpha sphere, hence score low. Changes to match and selected objects, and um, you're good to ex click export, export out, and then do the same for your high poly meshes. 
Make sure all the locations are exactly the same. Do not move these around. Click these, uh, export, FBXs, and then, oh, and then again, there's a high poly version, alpha ball high poly. Again, just click match and selected objects and give it a name and underscore high poly. So you have a low poly and a high poly version. And we're ready then to go into Substance Painter and bake these. Right, so with your Substance Painter open, you want to click File, New. We're gonna, we want to use PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Test. We want to select our file, which is the low poly we exported. So we're going to do Alpha Ball Low Poly. We can leave it at 1K texture, that's fine. And I'm going to change it to OpenGL so it just works nicely in Blender. And click OK. So this is going to load up our low poly spheres that we exported from Blender. As you can see, this is the 3D version on the left hand side, and this is our unwrap showing on the right hand side. What we want to do is click into this little croissant thing over in the corner. We can change it to a 1K texture because that's what we were using before. We want to select our high poly mesh, so alpha ball underscore high, high poly in, um, in the parameters. So this will take a couple of seconds, and then you see then the high poly mesh there in blue. So what we want to do is change our max frontal distance so it is not so far away from the uh, the mesh. Currently our cage is quite high away from our mesh. We want to bring this down. If it's showing red then you brought it down too far. Bring it just enough so it covers it. So in this case it's 0.25 and the max radius distance I think we can leave as it is. Um, these are the settings that I use okay so I always change this to mesh name because we as long as you cop, uh, do the same name, name format as me, you're going to have underscore LP here and underscore HP here. So then if you click matching by name, it'll, you've got your low poly meshes here and it's looking for the name of the higher poly mesh that matches it. So our, our alpha sphere underscore LP is looking for the alpha sphere underscore HP. Um, that's on the common settings. You want to change the ambient occlusion to the same thing. Self inclusion only on um, only same mesh name. And the same with curvature, and you can do for thickness as well. So I've chosen only on the same mesh name. That's the settings that I like to use anyway for my bake, for my bakes on most things because I always name everything. And then you can hit the bake button, give it a minute before it, while it bakes all the information. And there it has baked our pattern onto the low poly as you can see. Um, but we've got this weird section here because that's where we need it to be see through. Therefore, if you go back into the croissant, if you untick all these, and we want to bake opacity next. On the common settings, change your dilation width down to zero and apply diffusion, and click bake. It still not shows up here, but that's because we need to actually add on our opacity map in our layers. I'm going to delete the base one. I'm going to add a fill layer. I scroll down, I'm going to alt click opacity because that's the only one we want and I'm going to search for opacity so it's, it's looking for our opacity map that we just baked and there it is and it applies and as you can see it is working straight away. If we look at, at our opacity map it is baked really nicely. It is jaggedy here. Um, what, you wanted, what you can do is add an anti-alias in um, go up to 16, or we could even go to 64, and it should smooth out those that bake a little bit. Yeah, not perfect, but it, it's it's good enough. And that is simply it. You've got your all your other textures. You've got your normal map, your ambient occlusions baked on, curvature, everything, and obviously the most important one is the opacity map. As I said, it's dead quick. Um. As long as you do click the opacity, make sure you change this dilation, dilation width down to zero and apply the diffusion. Um, as I said, you can add super sample in if you wanted to, and it gives a nice result. You might see sometimes on your bakes of your opacity maps, you get this uh, thin black line. Um, this might be where a seam is in your, um, in your mesh, and the opacity bake is just kind of like thinking, oh, that's see-through because it's a very small seam. Um, it might not always be the case if you go into single channel opacity, for some reason it disappears. Um, 
it's worth checking out on your actual finished product if you if it's got a if it's gone see through in your seam then you know it's an issue um it's worth touching up in photoshop in that case and if you export your pasty map you can take it up into photoshop just paint that black line white in the opacity map and then you can import it back into substance painter but for the most part um the bacon technique works quite well if we go back and look at our high poly fence for example say you have this kind of pattern where it's not um a sphere and we want to bake this information you want to use a single sided plane for this um in this case uh, i'll just show you my low poly that i made up earlier I know it doesn't look like much of a fence now, but uh, I'm literally, in, in my case, I'm reusing this for here and here, I'm reusing it, using this on the other side. We want to save the UV space as much as possible, um, and we can get away with reusing these meshes and the textures. As I said, you just add a single sided plane, um, you stick it pretty much center uh, of where you want to bake, so it's going to pick up this information of in front of it. If you want to check the direction of your plane before you export it, you can click this drop down menu and face orientation and blue, you'll see that it is facing out this way. So this side isn't going to get baked, this red side, it's just this blue side. But what you'll be able to do is make this two sided uh, in your game engine or in, or in Blender, you can change the blend mode to uh, alpha clip and it will do the same. So it'll use the same information from the front and the other side. But yeah, it is the straightforward, you export this. Um, uh, the high poly and the low poly, just like we did with it, has baked the information in front of it. As I said before, it has picked up this information of this bevel and uh, in front of it. And uh, on the other side, it just copies the same. But it works out. It, you know, in, in a case of, you know, cutting down 6,000 tries to, to, what, two. Especially within games, you're going to be repeating these fences hands all over the place. You want to optimize it as best as you can. And if you can get away with this, like frankly, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I don't think people would be that bothered in this case. You want to use it where you think it's going to be best. So maybe not so much in a hero asset that you're going to be really closely paying attention to. But for stuff like this fence, that you're just going to sprint past and not really care. Um, I think it works quite well. It gives a, a nice look in the end. I think it looks gives a nice effect and uh, and it's not going to be too de detrimental to the player. I don't think the player is going to be that bothered that there's a single sided mesh. But you've saved yourself from all those uh, the ha the high try count to now like in this case it's only 150. Now we can repeat this fence a ton of times and it is not going to take up a fraction of what it would have done had we used mesh for all these little crisscrosses. If that if we'd done that it would maybe a nicer result of thickness but honestly you're not going to care in these situations you're going to be running past this open pick events and uh, it's uh it'll be fine but yeah guys i hope that was helpful to you and i uh, hope it was a nice continuation from the previous uh video now you can make all these ready to take into unreal or unity and you won't be bombarded with huge try counts and we can optimize our games a bit more uh, if you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll make keep making more videos for you guys. If there's anything specific you want, please let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys.